Jenna and today I'm going to be doing a movie review of Incredibles 2. I went and saw this movie just last night. I really did thoroughly enjoy it. I thought it was a lot of fun. Not sure it was worth the 14 year wait. That was such a long wait to wait for this movie. But overall I did enjoy it and I gave it 4 out of 5 stars. So before we get started, this is going to be a spoiler free review so you can watch the video in its entirety without fear of being spoiled. So Incredibles 2 is the sequel to The Incredibles which was released in 2004, so literally a 14 year wait between the two. And it follows a family of superheroes even though supers have been made illegal. This movie revolves around Elastigirl trying to perform superhero duties so that superheroes can become legal again and Bob stays home with the kids and the hilarity kind of ensues. So when I look at the storyline for this movie, when I first was watching the trailers, I was really not impressed because I was just kind of like, you've had 14 years to come up with a story and this is the best you could come up with. And after seeing the movie, I still kind of stand by that statement. Like it was, it was a good movie and I did enjoy it. And the storyline I think was really important. One of the coolest things about it was Elastigirl took the front lines in this and it was very, it definitely pushed it pushed a feminist kind of message at you, which is another video entirely that I'm not going to go into. But that was cool. They had a lot of important moments in it family-wise. They had a lot of messages and stuff that kids could learn from because it's a Disney Pixar film. That's what they do. But overall, the storyline was incredibly predictable. Not from the trailers. The trailers were kind of misleading. But once I started watching the film, within 10 minutes, I knew exactly how it was going to end. A certain character came on screen and I went, antagonist, this is the plan, this is how it's going to go down, this is a step by step of everything that's going to happen. And I guessed everything. So that definitely took away my enjoyment for the film because no one wants to go and see a movie that they can guess every single thing that happened. Not like There was not a single surprise in that entire movie for me. I guessed literally everything that would happen. Either the storyline was really dull and predictable or I'm just getting way better at predicting movies. But either way, I think the storyline was kind of weak in places. It worked for a kid's film. It worked for a sequel to The Incredibles. But I think the storyline could have been stronger in places and not as predictable. So looking at the characters, each of the characters were pretty much what they were in the first movie, which was great. But we, like I said, we got to see Elastigirl front and center, which was fantastic. I loved that. I loved that we got to see that and then we got to see Bob stay at home with the kids. The only thing is characters like Dash, he really didn't have much of an arc at all apart from his maths homework. So that's something, but I love seeing the family dynamic of everybody and just seeing all these characters again was something really fun and really special. So I did enjoy that. I think that the characters were definitely added upon from the first movie they have kind of grown and they've changed a little bit even though this movie takes place almost immediately after the first film ends so that's something a lot of fun. There's a lot of running gags going through this film and Jack Jack is just the best baby ever so getting to see him sort of discover his powers and the, how the family reacts to that that's something that the movie did really really well and that I really enjoyed. The one thing that I will say about this movie and something that I was a little iffy about was the fact that the film did rely a lot on strobe lighting and hypnosis kind of screens. That's something that was really, really important to the storyline and I don't think they could have changed it. But it is an interesting choice in a kid's film, especially because a lot of kids do experience photosensitivity or epilepsy. So to have a film like that is just something really different, I guess. Disney's definitely taken a risk, but the big thing is I know for Walt Disney got into a lot of trouble because a lot of cinema and Disney itself weren't telling anyone about the photosensitivity so there was no warning on the movies which meant that kids were having epileptic fits in the cinema. So when I saw the movie last night there was a warning in front of it but this is a week after the movie has been out so they've probably changed everything because they're like oh we don't want to get in trouble again. So that was something really interesting that I found about the movie was that it had this really intense couple of sequences that involved strobe lighting and I just I think that that kind of alienates 
some of your audience, especially when it comes to little kids and parents are going to be worried about taking their kids to this movie now. But overall, I think it was fine and that it worked really well with the story. So I guess that's kind of on parents to be careful. But even for me, I did struggle looking at a few of those scenes. I came home and I like went to bed and closed my eyes and I could still see flashing lights behind my eyelids. So I told you kind of how intense it was. So overall, I did really enjoy this movie. It was a lot of fun to watch. There were a lot of laugh out loud moments, which is what you want from a Disney Pixar film. I'm not convinced that it was worth the 14 year wait for. I mean, honestly, watching it, it felt like there was no time that we waited at all. I just think that the storyline that we got, because it was so predictable for me, it did definitely hinder my enjoyment. I think maybe the fact that I'm so much older now than the first film, but even re-watching the first movie now, I'm like, this is a great film. It's done so well. This one just felt a little lackluster to me. It felt that it didn't quite live up to the hype of how amazing it was. I know a lot of people are saying kind of the same thing and a lot of people are saying that it did live up to the hype. But for me, I think that the characters, especially the antagonist, I think that was really disappointing for me because it was so obvious. Even my sister, who really doesn't pick things in movies, even she said she picked it very, very early on in the film, which made it really quite disappointing in a way. Just the way that the dialogue was framed and the way that the character was portrayed made it so unbelievably obvious they were the antagonist. It wasn't funny. Like it it was so painfully obvious that the only people who won't pick up on it are small children who go to see the movie. Everyone else should guess immediately when this character walks on screen that they're the primary antagonist. As, which is funny because all these news articles are like, oh, in this big plot twist. I'm like, it wasn't a plot twist though. It was so obvious. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comment section below if you have seen Incredibles 2 and what you thought. I would absolutely love to know. If you like this video, be sure to give it a huge thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss a thing. Stay random. Bye.